Do you wonder where recording of your meeting from Teams is stored and who has access to it? My name is Shimon Bochniak from Microsoft 365 at work. I will introduce you to the new way of storing videos in Microsoft Teams. The rollout of the new approach for Microsoft Stream changed the way how Microsoft Teams storing the recordings of the videos from perspective of the meetings, chats, or any kind of calls you're doing in Microsoft Teams. In the past, all of that files were stored in the Microsoft Stream Classic application, but right now all these files are stored in SharePoint and OneDrive. From perspective of the data architecture, probably this is the more mature way to store large video files, but at the same time it could be quite confusing where your files are stored and who has access to it. In this video I will introduce you to where your video recordings are stored and how to manage access to it and some tricky elements connected with the whole mechanism that is working right now. And as always, if you would like this video, please leave the thumbs up. If you want to get the notifications about the new videos, please subscribe. Right now, I will switch to my screen where I will show you a few scenarios when the recording in Microsoft Teams is created, where these files will be stored and who have access to it. You will see there will be few cases that could be a small challenge for your team and longer time collaboration. And one more thing, remember there is also one more feature that could be impacting the way how you're working with your video recordings, the expiration time. In this video, I'm describing how to manage this parameter to be sure that recording from your meeting will not be archived because of expiration date. I prepared for you a few examples of how the recordings are stored to show you the mechanism behind it. And I will focus on two aspects that could be impacting for the way how you're working with that kind of files. So first of all, where the file is stored and the second, who has and who will not have access to the file itself. And why it's important? Because in many times, the biggest challenge you will meet is the case when you're sharing the video from recorded meeting, but people doesn't have access to it. So first of all, let's start with the simplest scenario we have. So we have the Microsoft Teams team, we have the channel and the meeting that is started directly in here. So somebody execute or plan the meeting directly in channel and recorded that meeting. If we will go to this file, let's open it. We will see that in this specific case, video is saved in the SharePoint. So in the SharePoint site that is created behind this specific Microsoft Teams team. So let's open this space. We are navigated to our SharePoint site that is created behind Microsoft Teams team. And if we will go to documents and to general, so our standard folder for general channel, we will found recordings and directly in here we have the specific video from the meeting generated directly in the channel itself. And if we will check the access to this file, you will see that this is the access generated directly from perspective of the channel. So every person that is added to your channel will automatically get access to the video stored in the SharePoint behind. Why it's important? Because membership of that kind of team will change in time and you will not have to maintaining that kind of access sometimes to very important training. So you can see generating the meetings in the channel and then recording the meetings allows you to managing the access the simplest possible way. But at the same time, we can assume this is not that common way of managing meetings nowadays. The second scenario I would like to present to you is the traditional meeting planned in Outlook and then share it with others. Of course, 
if we will record that kind of meeting then we will also receive the video files stored in this case in the OneDrive. And what is important, this is my personal OneDrive because I was the person who clicked record that meeting. And you can already start to see that this is super important. In case of the meetings that you're recording directly from Planet in the Outlook, or meetings that are recorded from perspective of chat or any other approach, then all that kind of recordings will be, first of all, recorded in the OneDrive account of the person who click record the meeting and access to this space will be limited. So let's see how it's looking on perspective of my OneDrive account. You can see that we have some recordings already in here in my personal OneDrive account. You can also see that these recordings are shared. Let's check the meeting that was planned in the Outlook and see who has access to this file. First of all, direct access through OneDrive is dedicated just for me, but there are two links granting the access to this specific file. One with the edit permissions, which is also granted to the person who click record and there is also link generating the access view only access to the people but what is important we have only two people that are assigned to this specific view rights and these are the people that were invited to the call you can already see that that kind of setup could deliver a little troubles first of all the file is stored in the specific personal space in OneDrive of the user and access is limited only to the people that were invited to the call. If we want to share that video with larger audience or maintain it for the future, we will have to maintain the access. And what is most important, the person who is owner of the OneDrive account where the recording is stored will have to maintain the access. You can imagine it could be quite tricky and quite problematic for that person if they will receive a lot of requests for the access for such file. I will also show you how that process looks like in real world scenario. And again, if you would like to maintain that kind of file for the longer period of time or share that with the larger group, like part of your team, move that data away. So use the move to functionality and move that data to the specific SharePoint site behind Microsoft team to be sure that all people that will join the team will have the access and you will not have to maintain that. I can imagine that this is some kind of additional work, but believe me, if that kind of videos are trainings or materials that will be useful for the longer period of time and membership of your group changing, it is highly recommended to do that. It will save you a lot of time. So let's see what will happen if we share or we try to share the recorded video from the meeting with the person who was not invited to that space. In this case, I switch to Chandler Bing and we get the link to the video from another call. You can already see that this file is stored on my personal OneDrive account. If Chandler Bing was not invited, probably that person will not be able to open the file. So what we can do, we can request access to the file. And as soon we will request that, owner of the data will receive our request. And this is the kind of message you were receiving from SharePoint on Live or OneDrive in case of granting the access to the video. And imagine how easy it will be to the owner of the video to ignore that kind of message. Moreover, if that kind of video will be shared with the larger group and there will be dozens of requests from people to access the data, be more than sure in such a case, it will be super difficult to expect from the owner of the video to review them and grant access to the file. So that's why it is so important to be sure who will record the video because only that person 
will have the rights to move the data away to the different location and to do this operation to transfer the data from personal OneDrive of one person to the shared space where this recording could be shared with the wider audience and access rights will not have to be maintained on such granular level. But these few tips should help you to make your life easier. As you can see, managing the recordings of the meetings and calls in Microsoft Teams is a little more complex right now. I hope this video will help you to better understand where your files will land and how to manage access for them, especially if these are the videos that you will need for the longer period of time. Remember, in case that you will need to move your videos between OneDrive or SharePoint to different places, you can easily use move to functionality that is also described in this video and in the article in the description. This could help you to manage the access the way that will not generate any additional troubles for you, especially for the new people that will join your organization. I hope it will be much easier for you right now to understand where your recordings are and how to manage them. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.